We've got three specific steps for you to implement today on how to deal with a rude, disrespectful child. Wow, dealing with a rude, disrespectful child. That's what a, a challenge. Yeah. yeah, that is so hard. It just kind of it sets things off inside you really fast. That's something that triggers parents mm -hmm. more than anything, yep. probably. Yep. So the very first thing, maintaining respect yourself. This is a challenge. Yeah. When someone's being disrespectful to you, especially someone younger, mm -hmm. it is really challenging. So we've got to find ways that we can maintain respect ourselves. We've talked yes. about it quite a few times about that, uh, becoming very aware of your own the way you show up in your own body. So with right. your face, is it calm? Are you reflecting back anger? Are your eyebrows calm? Is your voice calm? You know, Vicki, as you introduced this idea of maintaining a respectful demeanor yourself, mm -hmm. because that's how you're going to model it for your kids, obviously. I remember this group that I was working with. It was in a, a facility for juvenile delinquents. Okay, so these are all kids who, who practice disrespect. Some of them have been rude and disrespectful <laughs> in a lot of ways, and and each of them had their own story. But I remember sitting in a group with a bunch of kids who had been involved with gang activity. That's the context, mm -hmm. and these are kind of tough kids. And I remember this kid sitting over in the corner, and he's leaning back in his chair, and we were talking about respect, and he said, "Well, I respect those who respect me." And he's all tough about it and stuff. And I'm thinking, how hard is that to respect someone who respects you? <laughs> There's wow. no challenge there. I right? am so impressed. No, we're talking about being respectful because of who you are, not because of how you're being treated. So we've got to be really careful about allowing the disrespectful behavior of our children to trigger us into the same thing. We're going to be respectful no matter what. And remember, your job is to love them no matter what. And even if, even if they're disrespectful, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe especially then, because that's when it becomes the most challenging. And remember that loving them does not imply that you remove all consequences. Absolutely not. That implies that you are going to put those consequences in. So that's part of how it's easier to get back to the place where you can show respect is to remember that mm -hmm. you've got to distance yourself a little bit from the consequences, the behavior, and the child. Right. So that you show up as that respectful, loving, benevolent, kind, generous parent that you are. That is who you are. Show up that way. Let's model it for the kids. That's the first step. For the second step that we get to implement I'm a really big advocate of giving people the tools and the resources that they need to do their job. Your job as a parent is to love them no matter what and even if. We've also shared with you three stages. And remember, we've talked about stage, not age, in mm -hmm. other videos. There's one called Teaching Children Responsibility, where you can pick up those three stages. Or if you're in our Parenting Power Up audio program, that's where we go into it in detail. I think that it's good to teach those three stages to your kids. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people think, what? Talk to them about it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This brings me up a situation in school where I was working with a, a young girl that has some trouble with uh, her behavior towards other kids. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. often engages in, we use instead of bad behavior, I don't use those words. I use expected unexpected. and uh, yeah, expected and unexpected behavior. And we were talking about how, you know, unexpected behavior often other kids kind of treat you a little bit They'll weird. They, 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 they think you're kind of weird or they might treat you weird if you have a lot of unexpected behavior. So we talked about what she wanted and what kind of behavior would drive the situation so that she could get the, the results she was looking for. Mm -hmm. And then we had to talk through how she had to show a little bit more expected behavior so people would trust her at, so that, that she could then get more friends at recess. That's what she mm -hmm. wanted is somebody to play with her at recess. So we explained to kids the different stages and help them see that, that the consequences that you get are related to the stage that you're acting on. And so right. go ahead and teach them the stage and what they get, what kind of consequences follow those 
the behavior in that stage. Think about how benevolent and generous this is for you as a parent to actually teach your kids the three stages. This is our second step. Mm -hmm. Teach them the three stages because that's how they're going to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And if you don't teach it to them, the world will. The world's not going to give them what they want just because they demand it or because they're rude or disrespectful. They need to understand that that kind of behavior will actually restrict their choices and their freedom. Mm -hmm. This is how the world works. So really you're doing them a big service by teaching them the same thing that we're sharing with you here on the channel. And if you're not sure how to teach your kids that, remember the resources that I mentioned. That We've got the Parenting Power Up, which you can connect to. You've got coaching available and, and the other services that we're providing. But there's also other videos here on the channel. I'm thinking of two in particular. How to convince your parents to get you a dog. And that's where I show you how I would teach kids this principle. And don't be too deceived by the title. It's really helping kids to get what they want through appropriate behavior based on those stages of moral development. The other one is how to convince your parents to get you a phone. You can find those right here on the channel. So if you're wondering about how to actually teach your kids the three stages, tune into those videos and I'll help you teach your kids those three stages. Let's make sure that they know. Once they know the stages, you're going to really hone in when they're being disrespectful on the behavior. Mm -hmm. And you're going to separate that, your emotions from the behavior and you're going to apply the appropriate consequence according to the behavior, not your expectation of respect. Right. So this separation mm -hmm. that we're talking about is probably one of the biggest pitfalls we run into mm -hmm. as parents because we allow their behavior to determine our mood. And really, are you okay with your kid controlling your mood? Let's reclaim that. And in separating the emotion from the discipline, they have to connect a little more cognitively with the impact of their own behavior and maturity on their level of freedom. And that's why we've put this in as step number three that we wanted to be able to implement. Separate the emotion from the discipline Focus on the behavior with appropriate consequences for that behavior. And then as you model, like we talked about in stage one, a respectful approach, that's where they're going to learn some of the skills that they need to be less rude and disrespectful and to bring their behavior back into alignment. Hey, we also did another video about how to deal with a difficult teenager. You might want to cue that one up to watch next. There's a lot of resources. We mentioned some of those during the video great place to start is to pick up a free copy of my book, Pathological Positivity. Go to drpauljenkins.com, click the big orange button, all you do is pay the shipping and we'll get that into your hands. That also is a great starting point for positive parenting.